Hello and good evening to you all. Um, here we are yet again on a, another December night. And there's plenty going on in the world. There seems to be trouble and strife at Westminster. And there's trouble and strife for Ghislaine Maxwell. There's more pubs being demolished. Disgracefully beautiful pubs in the Cotswold being flattened. Omid Scooby has a failing book, and um, Dido Harding has been elevated at the Jockey Club. Now, we've got a few fun things. We've got a whiskey auction, a rather exciting one to talk about. We've got some good news on the Sycamore Gap tray. But um, I hope you can all hear me loud and clear, and I hope um, that you're all doing well. I say cheers to you, and cheers to me, and cheers to me if we disagree. But here we go. So, um, hello to Busted, Melissa Neal, Louise Lewis, Roy Fletcher, Nicole, uh, Sharon, Janice, Chili Kareen, CJ, Formerly ITBC, Expialidocious, Harriet Blanca. And thank you to Harriet Blanca for her ongoing help in this endeavor. So thank you to Harriet. Um, this um, is an, a lovely evening to welcome also Pennine Counties, Heidi Crimmins, Betty Clark, and Sandy Pantalon from, with a hello from East Texas. We've got a hello from Ireland. Um, you're coming in from all over the world. This is very jolly indeed. There's lots of you. There'll probably be a few more in due course, but hello. Thank you very much to all of those that signed the petition. Um, I have shared the link to the petition, and it, the petition is growing stronger by the minute. Um, thank you very much to many of you. Um, you've helped get it out there further. This woman, um, Merrilise Vandermeer, needs to be removed from Facebook and Instagram, and I have updated the petition in that regard. It is jolly well time that Merrilise Vandermeer was sent to social media Siberia. Um, we don't want to send her to Siberia where she can actually harm animals. I don't know where we could send her to where she wouldn't harm animals or humans with her disgusting, repuls repulsive behaviour, but we do need to send her somewhere else. This lunatic needs to be um, kept away from decent humanity and from beautiful animals, especially giraffes and leopards and lions and all the things that she has done. So please do try and promote this petition. Um, the link was provided um, yesterday, so please do try and share it further if you can. So, the first topic I shall touch upon is Robert Jenrick. Now, Robert Jenrick is somebody who I don't have a lot of time for. Mr. Jenrick is somebody who... I have written about previously. I will just try to see if I can find the article I've written about him. But Mr. Jenrick has resigned today. Now, Jenrick um, has had a lot of controversy in his career in the Conservative Party. He's had various roles as minister, and he has resigned today. Um, on the th uh, the uh, on in support of him. Andrea Jenkins, MP, came out in support. She was one of the very few and said, well done to Jenrick for resigning. As his former PPS, I saw his strength and how he stood up to civil servants. I know a decent man um, as he is and he, how he adores his family. This may well be the death knell for Sunak's leadership. Well, most people were not in support of him. Um, the wonderful Reverend Richard Coles, who used to host the BBC Saturday Live, but was terribly taken away from it, which it has seen it go a little downhill in my 
particular view on BBC Radio 4, um, 9 till 10 on a Saturday morning. Nikki Bailey is a perfectly pleasant lady, but she was much better when she had the Reverend Richard Coles. The Reverend Richard said, time for my thrice weekly call for a general election. Over 700 people have liked it within 10 minutes. So, you know, people agree with the Reverend Richard. He is a wonderful voice of reason in a mad, mad age. Um, I think the Reverend Richard is a national treasure and he is utterly wonderful. And him and Giles Brandruff and people like that add great things to the world because they just have a bit of fun. We need more fun in our world. That is something very important. But on the Threads channel, which I'm still trying to fathom how to use, I did manage to put a poll on it yesterday. Um, nobody seems to respond to me other than crazy people. Um, I don't get very much interaction on it. Um, but um, the threads, people said, the far right has finally done over Sunak. Another ministerial pension has been earned. Just get them all out, said another. Honest Bob, oh no, never mind. The Tories have gone insane. Well, I think they went insane an awful long time ago, sadly. The once great Conservative Party has destroyed itself. It is going in to a meltdown. Um, you know, he, this Jenrick, has been supporting um, the dreaded Suella, Cruella, who, quite frankly, gave a very boring speech that was of no consequence. Everybody said it would be the, the Jeffrey Howe dead sheep kind of speech. Um, I don't think it was very exciting at all. It was utterly boring. Just like Cruella, Suella. Another neighbour from hell, just like Pretty Patel, neighbour from hell. These people are the pits. They are dreadful, and Jenrick, of course, has previous form. He was the housing minister and approved unlawfully a planning scheme for Richard Desmond, um, you know, who used to earn pornography titles and now has moved on to earning things such as the Daily Express and um, OK Magazine, um, tried to get his hands on the national lottery and failed. Anyway, that is all I shall have to say about the idiot um, Robert Jenrick, who will no doubt probably next year be finding himself in I'm a celebrity, get me out of the jungle or something. That is going to be how this Pratt tries to revive himself if he does not end up leader of the Conservative Party. They wouldn't put anything off the agenda of someone like him. He could well be the candidate they prefer to having Suella or Pretty Awful. Now, that's what I have to say about that. Now, I have a nice little story to follow up with. Um, I thought it was absolutely charming that in Blair Castle in Scotland, bottles of the world's oldest whiskey were found hidden. They're believed to have been tasted by Queen Victoria. They sold um, for auction for a, a whopping sum of £385,630 for 24 bottles. So that's an average of about £16,000 a bottle. Um, one sold for 19500 and um, these bottles were distilled in 1833 and aged for eight years before they were bottled. Um, and I'm sure nobody will be drinking them very quickly. They will be kept um, by whoever has bought them. Um, but um, it's been an amazing journey to, according to the people that found it, um, and they brought it to auction, and um, some of the bottles will remain at the castle, so people can actually see them but um sadly you won't be able to try them but who knows what they taste like but um 
I did a plan to talk the other day about the uh, the champagne aged under the sea, and um, I have to say, you never know. It could be wonderful. It could be absolutely dreadful. You never know what you're going to get. So there we are. Whiskey, whiskey galore. Not quite lots of it, like the film where it all washed up on the island in Scotland, but um, an absolutely fascinating story. Each bottle was listed for £10,000, so they were anticipating £240,000. So the owners of Blair Castle have done rather well. They've made rather a lot more, so very well done to them. Uh, Busted says, I'll give it a taste. Well, um, there we go. Nicole says, everything in Scotland tastes nice. Um, so you like shortbread, do you, Nicole, perhaps? Do you like um, haggis and uh, deep fried and Mars bars? That's another thing. There are another things amongst the many things that Scottish people like. So there we go. Anyway, some other good news is that the salvage seeds and cuttings from the felled sycamore gap tree are showing positive signs. They may be able to grow new descendants. So the tree was cut, cut down in September by some vandals. Um, a man in his 60s and another man in his 30s were arrested on suspicion of criminal damage, they both remain on bail. Um, they do hope the National Trust that the rare plant propagation nursery where it, the seeds are being grown um, are going to be able to grow at least 30% of these mature seeds into cuttings. So, And they could be viable, so there will be descendants of the sycamore gap tree. <laughs> The sycamore gap tree was an iconic thing that obviously so many people enjoyed and loved visiting. Um, I will say it's a sign of sadness in the way it was by itself because it's terrible. As people like Ben Goldsmith, who are into rewilding, have pointed out, you know, those, those areas of land used to have forests on them. And we, the humans, chopped all those forests down long ago. So... That tree would not have been alone, you know, if we had managed the land in a better fashion instead of being obsessed with sheep and hill farming and intensive agriculture. And that tree um, hopefully will be iconic in generating more people to go into conservation. So um, the National Trust would like people, and I will give pass on the details, to submit photos and memories of the tree. Um, the site's manager, Andrew Pode, said, we are incredibly grateful for the many commemorative ideas we've received since the tree was felled. The creativity and thought behind some of the ideas have been inspiring, and it's an indication of just how important this tree was for so many people. Um, People can submit photos and memories of the tree to sycamoregap at nationaltrust.org.uk. Um, I have never been to visit the tree, so obviously I cannot do that myself. But if you have been there, why don't you do that? We say cheers to the memory of the sycamore gap tree. Um, Busted tells me he ran from a bull near the sycamore tree and has happy memories. Well, Busted... Why don't you please send in to the um, National Trust email address your memory? I think that would be a good story that they should add to the thing. As long Clearly, it was a good story because you beat the bull because you're still alive. So well done to you. Excellent news. So congratulations to Busted for being able to outrun a bull. Perhaps you should go off to Spain and join the Matadors. Perhaps that could be a thing for you. So here we go. That was the Sycamore Gap tree. Um, but now we go on to a sadder story, which is that of a pub called the Air Balloon at Birdlip. 
It's um, situated on the A, well, it was situated on the A417 until today when it was finally leveled. Um, it was um, at the road junction of the A417. It was a significant congestion point, according to this. I have been past this pub. I can't remember if I've been in it or not, but I probably should have done, but I I don't know if I did or not. It was situated next to a roundabout um, on a major road between Swindon and Gloucester via Sirencester. Um, so it's all part of the glossy posse where, you know, Prince Harry used to go wild in this vicinity. Whether he ever went to this pub, we don't know. Um, he used to go to a pub in the woods, which I think was called The Tunnel, down a track, and it was a bit of a wild happening for him. But um, the less said about Prince Harry, the better. We'll come to him later. Um, yes, well, he didn't do anything to help the air balloon at Birdlip. So the air balloon at Birdlip opened in 1784. So it's a very historic, well, it was a very historic inn. Um, and it was named after one of the first British balloon flights, the launching of a small hydrogen balloon by Edward Jenner on the 2nd of September, 1784. It flew from a Gloucestershire landmark, which I have visited, Barclay Castle, to Kingscott, and then onto a film, field, sorry, not a film, it should be on film, but it's sadly not, near Birdlip. The year after the pining flights of the Montgolfier Hot Brothers hot air balloon and Jacques Charles's hydrogen balloon in Paris. So, at the time, it was known as the balloon. Um, but by 17, in 1796, um, they decided to change its name. And in 1802, it became the Air Balloon. Um, it did become a brewery. It was part of the Cowley Manor Estate. And then it was bought by Green King in 2004. Um, Supposedly, in 2020, the menu included burgers, steaks, and vegetarian food. Well, um, well, I don't know whether, you know, pub classics and a lunchtime at Carvery. Now, it was a lovely building by the look of it, um, but the problem for it was it sat alongside a carriage, single carriageway road, um, which was considered an otherwise high quality route between the M4 and M5 motorways. Um, there were 340 casualties um, along the whole section of road between 1999 and 2014. Now, I don't know whether that means deaths. I think that probably means accidents. Um, um, it it was below the but it was below the average for that type of road. So in two thousand and nineteen, Highways England dis, decided to improve the road, and they have decided that they would de demolish this pub. Um, why couldn't they just move the road a little bit further the other way on the other side? I don't know. But um, supposedly they did not wish to do it elsewhere because there was a site of special interest nearby. Um, Harriet says the locals complain how unsafe the road is. I think it is a disgrace to demolish it. Um, um, Harriet says it's a few miles from her home away from home and it's all boarded up now. Well, I'm sorry to say, Harriet, it is no longer boarded up. It is levelled to the ground. It is... It is kaput. It is over. It has been demolished. It has been flattened by greed and stupidity. We should not go around destroying beautiful old buildings like the um, Crooked House and the other pubs that have been destroyed recently. Too many pubs are closing in this country. It is a very sad thing to see. But this pub um, closed um, in December 2022 on New Year's Eve. And um, actor John Chalice's widow, who is a lovely lady, said the couple used to visit the pub regularly. She was sad to see it closed. Um, 
you know, it should have stayed open for longer, said Highways England at that time. Well, perhaps it should have stayed over open permanently. And um, there were concerns that it would become a magnet for vandalism. Well, um, pubs are magnetic, but pubs are magnetic to communities. And it is a disgrace that these people pulled down this beautiful pub. It is a lovely building. And OK, it may be an accident black spot and maybe they needed to change the road. But why not change the road in another way? Um, so there will be a three, a new three-mile road which we built between the Air Balloon and Cowley roundabouts to provide an alternate route, connecting the Midlands and the south of England. Um, well, it's very sad, as someone called Julian Morris, a local, who's to see the pub being destroyed by a 360 degree, 360 this morning, a pub with so much history and was famous coaching in in the days gone by. If this is progress, I'm not sure I like it, he said. Um, it was a proper landmark, said another. It's a great loss. A pound every time I pass this to visit Wales or go shooting, said another. Love that pub. Such a shame. I remember driving past it as kids on the way back from our annual holiday at Bournemouth. I don't know how Bournemouth is anywhere near there, but anyway. So as an adult, I would intentionally stop there for a quick bevy and enjoy the nostalgia. Um, the work is due to be completed on the road in 2027, and the beginning of the building of this road is in 2024. So it's going to take three years, and, um, you know, another landmark destroyed. Isn't it an out absolute outrage? And um, the Hereford Times also threw in their thoughts on the pub closing back in December 2022 and said, um, you know, the, the pub owners would like to thank people for the support and kind words since we made the announcement that we will have to close. You know, this pub was a busy pub. It wasn't an unpopular pub. It wasn't a pub that was failing. But it's absolutely ridiculous that this pub is being, well, has been erased. It is totally shocking. So another person said, sad day, a lovely pub. I walked a few times as a child up Greenway Lane to the top with dad him telling me drunken stories from his younger days up there. So that's the poor old air balloon, which has sadly been erased from our landscape. Um, this is an absolute outrage, and I hope as much of the interior was dis was saved by people as possible. Um, and I hope that they reuse some of the brickwork or the stonework. Sorry, because um, it's Cotswold stone. There. Um, yes. Um, Am I doing Christmas shopping? Asks Elaine Harvey. Um, I'm not really into shopping, but I went to Waitrose yesterday. Um, that was an adventure on the local Loop bus. Um, that was quite an experience with my good friend Max, who I don't think is listening or watching tonight. But um, yes, we did pay a visit to... Um, the local waitress. Harriet points out um, locals say it was closed due to the traffic to MI5 headquarters in Cheltenham. So there's a bit of a conspiracy going on here about that. And on another occasion, we shall have to talk about the body in the bag spy who died in Pimlico, who also works at MI5 headquarters in Cheltenham, given a friend of mine used to share, a, well, lived in a flat in the same building and always said that he was a perfectly decent gentleman and all of the things said about him were very unpleasant. Um, CJ says, Russell Brand has been quiet, or quite, in, I think you mean quiet, well, he has to be because he is facing all sorts of investigations. So the best thing that little rat can do is shut his gob. 
he is an absolute creep. And as for that wallaby killing dog of his, um, there's another example of out of control, utterly disgraceful, utterly wrong, utterly reprehensible, should be sent off on the Bibby Stockholm, the dog and him. Um, he may be sent somewhere else if all is well. That could be a much better outcome for the rest of the world. Um, right. Anyway, uh, Bambi Debonair is disappointed because um, she had a delivery from Waitrose and did not get quail's eggs. We are emigrated, she says. Oh, dear. Well, you're... Um, you're going to have to substitute with something else. I don't know what to suggest. Have another gin. That might be the way around it. I'm having a whiskey. I shall have another in a moment. But um, I'm very sorry to hear you did not get your quail's eggs, but I'm sure you may find them in a local independent shop. That may be the place to go if you have one in your locality. Um, there we go. Waitrose substituted walnuts, says Bambi. Well, that's pretty outrageous. How ridiculous. But these stores do do very strange things. So, Sue Lung says, Waitrose is getting very expensive. The quality is not like it used to be. Um, I will say the local Waitrose I went to yesterday, the service was rather good, and um, the selection was excellent. So I don't know, but I don't tend to get things delivered. I like to go to shops, um, but I like to go to local shops as well. And I went to the um, local greengrocer the other day, which is a superb shop. It's called Prentice here in Broadstairs. That is an excellent local shop. We should all support the local shop. And that is a good thing to do. And I think I'll be having guests this weekend and we'll be going to visit the local bottle store, perhaps, because they like it there. Um, the Bottleneck, which is a good store. Um, but we all must support the local shops, as we've talked about only the other day. So there we go. But Waitrose is a good operation, other than the head honcho, who has been an utterly useless person. Um, there we go. Um, Harriet asks if Nav popped by today. No, well, Nav doesn't live anywhere near here, but he will come to visit perhaps this weekend. Who knows? You may have Nav on the channel. Nav London in the house, because there's also a Nav Yorkshire. But we will have Nav London if he comes to visit. But we will see. Um, right. So our next topic... Now we've dealt with the sad, sad demise of the balloon at Birdlip is um, Omid Scooby. Now Scooby-Doo, Omid Scooby, has not done especially well. In the first five days of him selling his stupidly titled book, Plastic Not Fantastic, um, peddler of pugnacious pillockery has sold just six and a half thousand copies. Poor him, the violins do play. So it's plunged to 215th on the Amazon's bestseller list. This man, or mouse not a man, has been peddling his poison for far too long. And this hatchet job of his is an utter disgrace. I'm not surprised that only 6,448 people watered in the first five days compared to the 31,000 who bought Spare in the first uh, Harry's autobiography. Um, sorry, um, Sorry, his Finding Freedom sold 31,000 in its first five days. Harry's autobiography, Spare, sold 467,000. So Endgame has been a little bit of a flop 
It will be in the bargain basement of the charity shops soon. If anyone has bought it, um, Heidi Crimmins is asking me to interrupt with, um, will I be putting up a Christmas tree? I'm, as someone who lives alone and doesn't have that many guests, um, I'm not hugely into Christmas trees, but um, I don't know. We'll see. But I don't really... I'm not really into Christmas decorations, if I'm frankly honest. I think we should celebrate our friends all day of the year, every day of the year, and be cheerful in that regard. But um, I realise that many of you love Christmas, and I think that's fantastic. But, um, no, I um, I don't really go with the whole Christmas thing. I'm kind of i support the idea of everybody else having fun and i will join in the fun with other people but um in my own home i'm not really particularly involved in the christmas spirit suppose supposedly you might be called but um there we go um i'd rather have the spirit of gin that would be wonderful so all gifts of gin are, are, as usual, welcome via the magnet in Albion Street, Broadstairs. And Harriet says, have an empty gin bottle tree. Um, I could easily do that, yes. Um, I could have made a Christmas tree out of um, gin bottles. That would be funny. The Christmas spirit is gin, says Paulie. But meanwhile, returning to the topic, um, the end game is not doing very well it's now gone down to 312th um it is going down and down and down the book's failing performance comes uh, after the huge amount of media coverage says the daily mail as well as tv interviews conducted by scooby and the bbc itv abc times evening standard independent tatler people l.com paris match He's been doing the rounds, trying to flog his tittle-tattling tripe, but he's not doing very well. Um, the book was not on prominent display at London's oldest bookshop, Hatchards on Piccadilly, with only one copy put aside on order, according to The Guardian. Um, they did have 14 copies stacked on a table in, in the Piccadilly um, Waterstones, but according to The Guardian, there was limited interest there too. This book has gone down like the lead balloon that it deserves to be. I think that um, Scooby and his little clan, the Sussex Squaddies, are an appalling bag of bilge, and a lot of them need putting on the Bibby Stockholm. It is proof that the British public prefer Prince William, um, the Princess of Wales, Queen Camilla, and King Charles to the Montecito meddlers. So where are the Montecito meddlers? Why don't they come out and make their own statement about what they feel about the nasty things said about their relatives in the Dutch edition of that Bag of bilge tripe. It is an utter disgrace. Um, there we go. So this book is really, really doing very, 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 very badly. And I'm so pleased to hear it. I hope none of you have bought it. Please don't buy it. Don't help him make money. He doesn't deserve anything other than being sent off to Siberia along with Merrilee's Van der Mer or someone of her type. That's where he belongs. The Persian Pillock is an absolute fool. He is a man who has no real sources of any consequence. He doesn't name his sources. His sources are as much use as a chocolate teapot. He is as much use as the village idiot. He is the weakest link and he needs to be told goodbye. You know, this is the man who used to go around with Jody Marsh when he worked at Heat magazine. He really is a lowbrow person. 
a person who cannot even tell the truth about his own age. He has since admitted that he did lie about his own age, and he's had to own his mistake. Well, why did you do it in the first place, you plastic, not fantastic pillock? You are an idiot. I'm 42, so what? Who cares? When I'm 82, I'll still be 82. I, I don't want to, I won't lie about it. There's no need to lie about your age. I can understand why some people, female, tend to knock a few years off from time to time. There are females I know of, one in particular, who has hands that are rather a giveaway, and she rather thinks she's rather grand. And my friend who will be watching this will know who she is. Um, she's definitely not the age she pretends to be. And she claimed that she told a lie once to a journalist, and that lie stuck. Now, she is someone who really should know better and should have grown up long ago, but never will, because she's as vain and as vacuous as she utterly is. So um, I won't be sending her season's greetings. I'll say season's time to shut up to her. She's another fool. But plastic, not fantastic, and her should jolly well get a room. They'd get on perfectly. They would be ideal bedfellows. People who lie about their age. No, and it was not Anthea Turner. No, Anthea Turner, as far as I'm aware, hasn't lied about her age. So, no, she's just busy swinging into action and helping out wherever she can, um, allegedly. Um, that's what she likes to do. So there we go. Anyway, that is that matter dealt with, the matter of Omid Scooby's crappy book. So the next one is um, a mixed bag because the Jockey Club has moved into the modern age. The Jockey Club have um, appointed, for the first time since 1750, when it was founded, a woman, a lady, as its um, head, basically. F first female senior steward, apparently, will be poised to appoint her. Dido Harding, Baroness Harding of Winscombe, will succeed Sandy Dudgeon. Now, Sandy Dudgeon... Um, has done a very good job at the Jockey Club in some people's view. Some people don't like his decisions. But the problem with Sandy Hard uh, with Dido Harding after Sandy is that A, she will have nobody overseeing her because the chief of the Jockey Club seems to do whatever they want. Um she has been, you know, an, an amateur jockey herself, so she's got she's got the involvement, um, and you know she was very involved with um, coronavirus related things. Now, that is the problem, you know. This woman in the inner circle is being criticised because, you know, should she be entitled to walk in just because she's an owner rider? But, you know, it's called chumocracy by um, the Guardian's um, Greg Wood, who is quite rightly questioning, you know, is this actually a move that's good? He said, whether this, you know, whoever she is, should entitled to walk into one of the sport's most powerful roles is another. The death of Queen Elizabeth II might have been the right time to review the club's royal charter, but instead it seems to be business or chemocracy as usual. And while the jockey club electing its first female senior steward might look like a 21st century move, in many ways it is really just more of the mid-19th century, basically. Um, that is um, something that I think we need to reflect upon and decide, and let's see if she is good at the role. Um, but, you know, we've had plenty of people connected with coronavirus, like Matt Hancock, the health secretary who was at the time, and is also the MP for Newmarket, um, head up the government's track and trace program you know it's all about whether this is um a suitable appointment if if it does occur so i do think people should reflect upon that 
and I do think it is worthy of consideration. So well done to Greg Wood for highlighting this when others have failed. So I think Greg Wood has done a very good job. He is good at the racing tips also. And I love a racing tip, and I've done okay in recent weeks at Cheltenham, but I've had good days and I've had bad days. I did have a 22 to 1 winner, which was very pleasant, but I've also had plenty that don't. So we will see um, what happens in the coming days. But our next and final story is that RFK Jr. has, admit, has admitted that he did not fly once on Jeffrey Epstein's jet, but flew on it at least twice. He's admitted twice. So this man, who is a conspiracy theorist, has been telling porky pies in the past. He is a wannabe presidential contender, and he went on it twice. And that his then wife had a relationship, according to the New York Post, a relationship, whatever that may mean, with Madam Ghislaine Maxwell. I'd call her mucky Madam Ghislaine Maxwell. Um, he opened up, um, as, and the New York Post call him a notorious perv in terms of who he was tied to, Epstein, um, when he was on Fox News. He said, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet two times. I was on it in 1993, and I was on it, and I went to Florida with my wife and two children to visit my mum over Easter. Um, he was referring to his late ex-wife, Mary Richardson Kennedy, and she died by suicide in 2012. My wife had some kind of relationship with Ghislaine Maxwell, and they offered us a ride to Palm Beach. I went then, and on another occasion, I flew again with my family, with I think four of my children and Mary and my wife, to Rapid City, South Dakota, to go fossil hunting for a weekend. Otherwise, I was never on his jet alone. That was in 1993, so it was 30 years ago, before anybody knew about Jeffrey Epstein's nefarious issues. He claims he's been very open about his relationship with Epstein from the beginning of his campaign. Um... And um, it really is creepy to think how this goes on and on and on. And Ghislaine, who is whinging and whining yet again in prison about her conditions and is moaning and moaning and groaning and groaning. And there we are. You know, this woman had them all in her orbit. It is an utter disgrace. It's utterly wrong. And... I have to say, you know, why is all this being hidden from the public? You know, this is completely wrong and it's not correct. So we don't need to have any more of this nonsense. So let's have the names of the liars and the cheats and the creeps that went on the Lalita Express. It is jolly well time that we had naming and shaming of such People, so let's bring that on. So, anyway, that is the end of our topics for the evening. So, if Harriet may be ready, then we may have a little quiz. Um, I shall pour myself another whiskey and water to keep me going. Right. We will choose a random page and we will begin this quiz. Right, potluck. Here we go. Question number one. Harry Giles asks, what's the tipple? It's just a whiskey and water. Very simple, but cheers to you and cheers to me and cheers to me if we disagree. What name was given by allied troops in the South Pacific during World War II? to an all-female English-speaking radio broadcasters of Japanese propaganda. Montecute wins with Tokyo Rose. Well done to Montecute. 
Question number two. William the Conqueror, Charlemagne, and King Edmund were all crowned on which already significant day? A day that you've all been talking about already this evening. So I hope you know the answer. It was as Montecute gets a second point in a row. Montecute wins with Christmas Day. Tesco Apprenticeship asks, are you okay, Matthew? Um, no, I'm not in need of being uh, checked, Tesco Apprenticeship, by um, Holly Willoughby. So I, I'm more than a-okay, but I don't need to be asked, are you okay? Thank you. Very kind of you to ask, but um, perhaps a better question next time. But thank you for your kind thoughts. Very kind of you. Question number three, which Scottish market town is nicknamed Queen of the South and plays host to the football team of the same name. It is not Aberdeer, it's not Stirling, um, it's not Dundee, it's not Midlovian, it's not Aberdeen. It's not QPR, it's not Rangers. No, that's, they're not towns, they're football clubs. It's not Port Lovian or Lockable, wherever that is. But Nicole gets the point with Dumfries. Nicole is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Question number four. With his name also found as the surname of footballer Leon and TV presenter Richard, who was the founder of the Ottoman Empire? Hmm. It wasn't Celtic and it wasn't Britain. No, we don't even seem to have a single answer. It's not calm. It wasn't Mustafa and it was certainly not Richard Madeley. It wasn't Smith. It wasn't Viking. It wasn't Metzi, it wasn't Stature, it wasn't Constantine. It wasn't Gaza, no, he was too busy going fishing with Railmoat and trying to get a uh, few cans of beer and a fishing rod to him. Um, the winner with Osman is Pip Field. Well done to Pip Field. You get the point. Excellent. Well done to you. Um, right. In 2018, Arsenal Football Club entered into a marketing deal with which Eastern African country's government? Rather controversially today to do with Suella Braverman's little uh, hatchet job plot. It wasn't Gambia and it wasn't Ottoman. It wasn't Ghana and it wasn't Emirates. Tesco Apprenticeship wins with Rwanda. Tesco Apprenticeship gets the point. Well done to Tesco Apprenticeship, um, who has moved on from Is It OK to Rwanda. Perhaps you could be on the first flight out there if you wanted to accompany Suella, Cruella, and Pretty, and Gritty, and the rest of the trash bags of the Conservative Party. Right. Question number six. British forces engaged in the Battle of Tora Bora in December 2001 gave the caves a witch nickname in honor of a tabloid socialite. And this was a name of a friend of mine, a lovely lady who was quite the opposite of some of the other it girls of her generation. It was not Saudi Arabia, no. We need to know the name of the island, the the uh, the caves. Sorry, we need to know the names of the actual caves, the full name. They weren't called Tara, but they, you, you're getting you have a relevant connection but you don't have the thing it's not called victoria harvey no nothing to do with her and it wasn't twiggy and it wasn't joanna lumley but i thought some of you would have had some knowledge of this so these these caves um it seems that none of you are capable 
of answering. Um, Queenie Morris is getting close. Queenie Morris is close to getting involved. But we need the next part of the answer because there is a full word. And the answer is not Tara Bara. No, it's not the Bora Caves. It's not Bora Bora. But you are getting close, but you're not in the room. So unfortunately, none of you get the point. The answer to the question is Tora Bora Tompkinson, named after the lovely Tara Palmer Tompkinson, an absolutely delightful lady who I raise a glass to the memory of, someone who I enjoyed spending time with, an absolutely lovely lady. I didn't know she would end up in a quiz question, but she was one of the most delightful ladies you could ever meet, as opposed to some of those other twit girls out there. Anyway, she was charming. Question number seven, which 400 meter hurdler won 122 consecutive races between 1977 and 1987? Queenie Morris would like half a point. Okay, Queenie Morris, you can have half a point. Okay, we'll allow you half a point. Please note that down. Thank you to our Debbie McGee for the evening. Harriet will note that in the book, please. Let's note it in the book. Anyway, the winner of the next question um, is Sharon Osvenham with Edwin Moses. Well done to Sharon Osvenham. That's quite a name. Um, which Indian tea is made by boiling tea leaves with milk, sugar, and optional spices, including cinnamon and cardamom? It is not a Sam, but Montecute gets yet another point. The answer is chai. Well done to Montecute. You sound like something from the Hamptons. You know, you could be Montucket, or you could be from... Am Amanga Set or, you know, somewhere like East Southampton or East Hampton, New Montecute. I don't know where you're from, but we hope to find out where you're from. But you do sound you're a bit like you're from Montucket. So there we go. Right. Um, Schubert's eighth, Beethoven's tenth, and Borodin's third are all symphony symphonies better known as what? Bambi Debonair gets the point with unfinished. Well done to Bambi Debonair. That is very good. Well done. Right. Question 10. Your halfway house. Prague was built on the banks of which river? It is not the Danube. It's not Jordan. And it's not... Any of those things. So it's not the Rhine, no. No. Nope. You don't seem to be very good at this. It was certainly not the Thames and it um the Volga, well um no. We need the correct name, which is not Volga. And Heidi says, God bless Tara Tom and Pompkins, and I say yes, I totally agree. Um, right. No, 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 and no, and more no's. It's not the Sen, but Vlatvar is the answer. Well done to Pip Field, who gets the answer. Well done to Pip Field. Next question. Which 82-mile linear earthwork roughly follows the border between England and Wales and it was originally built to divide Powys and Mercia. It was not Hadrian's Wall? No, most definitely not. And it wasn't the Ganges? No. It's nothing to do with Hadrian's and it wasn't called The Bridge? No. That sounds like the name of a murder show, The Bridge. You can imagine how many people jumped before they were pushed. 
the Great Wall of China, the Seven Bridge. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Stonehenge. No. Scandi drama was called The Bridge. Yes, I do remember it, but I don't think I particularly enjoyed it. I don't think I watched all of that. It's not Monmouth and it's not the River Dee. It's not the Seven Budge. The question is will be repeated once. Which 82 mile linear earthwork roughly follows the border between England and Wales and was originally built to divide Powys and Mercia? It is not known as the toll charge, no. Right, so it looks like none of you are capable of answering this question. Um, we won't be holding on much longer. The answer is Offers Dyke. So none of you got that. So that question is thrown out. And nobody got the answer. Um, there we go. Right. The Forbidden City is a palace complex in which modern-day Asian city? C.S. Lewis wins immediately with Beijing. Well done to... C.S. Lewis. So C.S. Lewis gets the point. Question 13. Vocalist Ian McCulloch, guitarist Will Sargent, and bassist Les Pattinson were the original members of which band? Montecute gets the point with Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, and as for people complaining that their answers are not being seen, I only can report on the answers I see on the screen in front of me in the order that they arrive. So no complaining. Um, I cannot be anything other than the final judge. So I'm very sorry if you you think you're answering, but maybe you aren't pressing the return button hard enough. Perhaps try harder with the thing. Anyway, I agree. It is odd if you have tried, but we never saw it. So on this occasion, unfortunately... You were not there, and you were not seen. So we can't we can't count invisible answers. Sorry. Right. Vocalist Ian McCulloch, guitarist Will Sargent, and oh, no, we've done that one. Right. Question fourteen in Edgar Allan Poe's poem "The Raven." What is the only word that the titular raven says? What is the only word uttered by the raven? C.S. Lewis wins with nevermore immediately. Well done to C.S. Lewis. You're obviously um, an enthusiast for Edgar Allan Poe, who I think is one of the darkest and driest and wackiest and most wonderful people you could come across. I think he is fantastic. So there we go. Right, question 15. Who directed the film Almost Famous based on his own experience as a reporter for Rolling Stone magazine in the 1970s? Um, Sandy Pantalon can have the point, even though she doesn't spell it correctly. Sandy Pantalon got there first with Cameron Crowe. You do have the E, but you don't have the O. You used an I, but um, I we understand that, you know, on a computer, I is next to O, so I can forgive that discrepancy. Right. Usually, how many counters does each player have at the start of a game of backgammon? Usually. I don't know why that's usually. Maybe there are different forms of backgammon. Um, C.S. Lewis wins with 15 straight away. C.S. Lewis is doing very well here tonight. Um, well done to C.S. Lewis, whoever you are. Um, Harriet says, stop using Siri for the answers. We play fairly here. But um, he gets it within seconds, so I don't know how he's so quick. But there we go. Thomas Chippendale was an 18th century designer and maker of what? An easy answer there. Very easy answer. Bambi Debonair wins with furniture. Well done to Bambi Debonair. So Bambi Debonair is back in the game. 
which county country sorry uses the international vehicle registration code e cs lewis wins again with spain well done to cs lewis um harriet is still suspicious of you but um we don't know but we see but no there we go um right Question 19, which actor played the nine-year-old Cole Sear in The Sixth Sense? This is your final penultimate question. Montecute wins with Haley Joel Osmond. There we go. Holy, holy, Haley, not holy, Joel Osmond. And your final question is, in 1982, which company notable for founding the football pools was the largest private company in Europe? It is no more, but um, there we go. C.S. Lewis wins with Littlewood. So um, do we have a winner? Do we have a winner amongst this group? Montecute wins with five points, right. Well, Montecute is saying that they would never use um, Alexa. Um, but I'm not accusing anyone of using anything, but thank you to Montecute and well done to all the others and including C.S. Lewis for joining in. Um, this quiz is purely for amusement only. It is not to be taken seriously, but we don't need cheating and we don't need nonsense and we don't need people complaining. So if you don't like the quiz, you don't have to like it, which I know some of you don't like it, so you turn off, which is fair enough. But um, the rest of us rather enjoy doing this and learning some new information. So well done to each and every one of you and a happiness galore. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Now, I'll be told off that I haven't turned off this chat. I have no idea how you turn it off. Um, it doesn't turn off. Um, when I press end stream, I end the stream. That's all it's possible to do. So I will say good night and good gardening. And as the late, great Jill Dando once said, don't have nightmares. You take care. My best wishes to you all. Um, there we go. So I will press end stream and then I will thank you all and say good night and pip pip. Take care. See you tomorrow. <laughs>